I thought I said no eating cookies in bed. It's not a cookie, Mother. It's a fruit Newton. Oh, carry on then, carry on. If you were a kid of the late 80s, early 90s, and you had a snack period between second period and third period in elementary school like I did, there's no doubt you remember this young boy and what he was selling. It's not a cookie, mother. It is a fruit Newton. A sentence that was said so many times, I could never forget it. It's a show of how powerful commercial television is and the way that it affected us even as kids. But now there's a much more powerful element that's affecting not just kids, but adults. At the end of the day, people are guilty because of social media. Now everybody can see what's going on with this issue with Diddy. For me, it's like, okay, I've seen this with R. Kelly. I've seen this with Bill Cosby. I've seen it back in the day with Mike Tyson, but there was no social media then. And what you got, you know, same thing with the Me Too movement, right? Because it's just an extension of it where, you know, somebody got in trouble because somebody said so. And a bunch of people on social media go, yeah, yeah, I know they did it. I know they did this. And it's like, okay, so now they're guilty. Shout out to LAR Movement, one of the true OGs of the space. If you have time, listen to the entirety of his stream and give him a sub because his material is very thoughtful and it's thought provoking for me for sure. What he's speaking about here is that the public has now gotten a gavel, if you will, because of social media. It has made it possible for the common person to cast doubt, aspersions, or even judgment on people that in previous times we could only look at on television far, far away and just envy. And it's because of this newfound power that we don't really understand the effect that not only is it giving us, but it's taking away from us or casting upon us. I remember my first instance of going to an indoor fishing center, which here at times that would be connected to like a recreation center where you can bowl or play mini golf. And they'll have a, like a center next to it where older people can relax and sit down and catch fish that are quite frankly in a pool that can't escape and the joy of the activity for me seemed a bit strange until you really think about it if you like fishing or you want to experience fishing it's great because sooner or later you're going to get the experience of catching a fish that you're not going to keep you're going to put it back and the fish are going to keep swimming around and they get fed and it's a way for people to relieve stress but in a way, it's akin to social media because you have a feeling that you are making a difference. But for the average person using social media, you're just fishing in a pond with fish that are already provided in the pond. And you are the one that's being consumed. Pardon me, would you have any gray poupon? But of course. <laughs> no matter how independent a woman is, when she is in the presence of a real man, she can relax and she will not be independent. She will not treat that man like she do not need him because he won't allow her to. So for the men out there saying, oh, if you want to be independent, then why you need me? You act like you don't need me. No, I don't act like I don't need you. You just haven't created a force to be needed. When we were kids and we pulled up next to each other on our dirt bikes and we said, do you have any great poupon? We were playing rich because we knew our real reality was closer to middle class, lower, upper middle class, depending on where you found yourself. And it was just an idea to us. But now in the age of social media, everyone believes that this commercial is the way everyone lives. Everyone is driving in Rolls Royces. And if I don't have what I want, then something is wrong. And you're seeing this voiced in the expectations for the kind of partner that's supposed to come along and make everything work you have not put yourself in such a position to where i feel like it's safe for me to even depend on you real men don't even do that shit. 
Real men really just know how to stand in the gap. They know you're so independent to the point where you will figure it out by yourself, but they make sure you don't have to. That's how they become valuable. They be like, oh, I took care of this for you. Oh, I know this was stressing you out, so here's what I did. They don't even be asking no questions. All they be doing is taking notes and paying attention. And here you are saying, well, you never come to me and ask me for nothing. I shouldn't have to. If you know that I'm an independent woman, why do you think that I got to ask you for every little bitty thing? But real men know that, look, I'm going to stand in the gap for her. She could be able to relax in her feminine energy. She can just come into the room and know that everything is taken care of. She can make one less decision when I'm right here in the room. Those are the men that are needed because <laughs> we don't just need men occupying space. We need men being men. If you watch a good amount of black social media, you'll notice that there are two themes that are almost ubiquitous in the space. One is everyone has a definition for what a real man is. A real man does this. A real man pays for this. A real man acts like this. A real man allows this. And the second ubiquitous theme you'll hear is a real man should. Should, of course, is a word that I've come to not necessarily despise, but I understand in the real world, should is just a preference. It's something that you'd like to be the case. But everyone was willing to tell you a real man should do this. He should pay for this. He should do all of these different things. But what we have to understand about modern day social media is that it is all of the traditional tropes that men are supposed to do in traditional roles. Plus, get ready for another incredible lifestyles, your VIP journey into the lives and loves of today's winners who really know how to enjoy the great things of life. I'm dating a broke guy and it really, really sucks because he has the best personality, hands down. I have so much fun with him. And, but it's like, it's gotten to the point where right now I'm not doing as financially well as I normally do. I've paid for the trips, I've paid for the hotel, I've paid for the rental of the car. If we've been to concerts, I've paid for the tickets. He does what he can when he can, but he doesn't do enough. <laughs> See, this is the problem. Like dating right now is terrible. Like we probably have the worst dating generation ever. And it's simply because of social media. In her video, she goes on to say, well, yeah, when women get on social media and post their partners, it's always something good, but we never have these conversations about dating broke men, but they're always having conversations about dating men who are financially well. And it's like, why are you sitting here comparing your men or y'all's relationship to another relationship? That's where the problem really began. Then she makes this video right here. So somebody asked her up here and said, does he have a plan, right? She says this. He has a job, it's a good job, but there is a lot of debt. But then again, like the way that the world has been lately, like COVID and inflation, it has been a little bit hard and he's a homeowner, I'm a homeowner. So if you're making $50,000, don't date. Ooh. I'm I'm just being for real. You're not ready to date. Again, I'm with you. I still remember gathering around the television as a kid with my family to watch Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. At that time, it was just entertainment to us. It wasn't really something that we were necessarily striving for. It just seemed like there's a small group of people that are extremely well off and this is what they live like and that's kind of cool. But we have a VCR and we live in a nice neighborhood and I get to play with my friends. I got Transformers. I'm good. What I think has happened in the transition from the Gen X period to modern day times is for a growing number of people, the lifestyles of the rich and famous seems much, much closer. And you have more people saying, instead of that's what some people are living and they must live nice, but I'm okay with what I have, it's I want that. And then I think it's gone from I want that to if I can't get that, then anyone that's not giving me that is not worth my time. And it's gone from that to, if you're not there, you're broke. And this transition has left some young ladies saying, if I can't get exactly what I want. So I'm child free by choice. And everyone always says like, what's your purpose? If you don't have kids, what's your purpose? My purpose is getting my nails done, um, going shopping, treating myself. Look at this new bag I just got from Goyard, stunning. Uh, this new sweatsuit I got from Aloe. And being sober, traveling, 
I don't know, taking naps. Have you ever taken a nap? It's like the funnest thing ever. It's so nice. I enjoy naps a lot. So don't say I don't have purpose just because I don't have kids. How dare you? To understand how much times have changed, per the New York Times, group bids FCC ends ads on children's television. There was pressure on television networks to end all ads on children's television. It's supposed to be good for you. Did you try it? I'm not going to try it. You try it. I'm not going to try it. Let's get Mikey. Yeah. He won't need it. He hates everything. He likes it. Hey, Mikey. The petition to eliminate toy advertising was the second submitted by the group before the commission. Last month, Mrs. Sarson asked that all advertising of vitamins and drugs be taken off children's programs. And she said yesterday, a third petition requesting the banning of food advertisements on children's shows be submitted next month. In yesterday's petition, the group contends that children do not have the maturity of experience to analyze and discount the normal puffery claims of commercials and that as children do not usually have enough money to buy the items advertised, they are manipulated into pressuring their parents to do so for them. This, of course, sounds like regulation before a market that became deregulated. And we went from that to children now doing TikToks as elementary school kids. And now there seems to be a bit of a push in the different direction, in, at least in Florida, where they're trying to regulate some social media apps for young children, but it may just be too late because there is a time where they, as adults, wanted to regulate what was going in front of their children's faces. And now we have full generations that from the ground up were raised on social media. And for men, social media may have its ways of being used, but for women in particular, if you are exposed to lifestyles that are rich and famous and gray poupon and young starlets going on immaculate vacations from the age of five, six, seven, eight, nine, you grow your whole life expecting that in a partner. And if you can't get that in a partner, you say, then I don't want a partner at all. Probably a reason why many of us are looking at passport bros, but it's just a sad reality of the place we come from. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, comment below, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care, guys.